Today I'm going to talk about how I was scammed by Treasury Direct, one of the largest organizations in the U.S., probably one of the largest organizations in the world. It's part of the U.S. Treasury. TreasuryDirect.gov is the one and only place to electronically buy and redeem U.S. savings bonds. We also offer electronic sales and auctions of other U.S.-based investments to the general public, financial professionals, and state and local governments. So I went to log in today to my Treasury Direct account. While attempting to log in, this is the message I received. For security reasons, your account cannot be accessed. Please contact us at this number. So I called this number. I also noticed that I received a message from Treasury Direct earlier in the day, and it said that your account was flagged as having some concerns. Risk management has placed a lock on your account as a precautionary measure. If you wish to have the lock taken off the account, you will need to fully complete sign and, ret and return to this office an account authorization form, FS form 5444. Now, this is a form that you can't just complete online. You actually have to go and get this notarized. Acceptable seals, a notary seal or stamp. This is the actual form that I completed. So I actually called and I, I said, what, what's the issue? They didn't give me the specific reasons, but I said, okay, I'll fill this out and I'll email it to you probably in a day or so. And the guy on the phone said, um, well, actually you can't email it to us. You actually have to mail it to us. <laughs> so I looked at the form here. It says here, uh, you have to mail it to PO box, Minneapolis. So I actually had to go and pay for a notary because I don't have any bank accounts, local bank accounts. Everything's online now. So I couldn't go to Chase or Wells Fargo and get the free notary services. I had to pay $15 at the UPS store to get a notary. I had to fill out this form, take it in, pay the 15 bucks, and I have to print out an envelope, pay for the postage, and I mailed it today. So today's uh, July 3rd, and I mailed this. So what did I do to deserve this? Well, I tried to take some money out. I put some money in and I took some money out. I didn't do anything. I have $500 in there that I was going to transfer to a bank that I linked. I have two bank accounts that I own in my name linked to the Treasury Direct account. And I decided to put in a $1,000 deposit to Treasury Direct just the other day. So they have $1,000 of mine and $500. They haven't paid it out. So they have $1,500 of mine that they're holding. This is not some fly-by-night organization. This is part of the U.S. government founded in 1789. This is their headquarters right here, this massive old building. They have a budget of over $20 billion a year. What do they do? They're in charge of producing all currency and coins in the U.S. They collect taxes. They pay the bills for the U.S. government, federal finances. They supervise national banks and thrift institutions. So if if this organization is screwing over people, holding their money, or or being deceptive, then you know what institution is safe? Before you start giving me the thumbs down and saying this is clickbait, it's not true, I wasn't scammed. Well, do you know what opportunity cost is? The opportunity cost of money. They're holding my money right now, which if they don't think that I am who I am, they should return the money and then I should do it over again. But they, you shouldn't be holding the money. Say, we don't trust you. Take the money and then hold it until I, until I verify. That's what Chime and some of these other scam companies do. And that's what they're doing at this point. They haven't given me back the money. I have $1,500. That opportunity cost of the money, that's money that I can't spend, that's money that I can't invest. By the way, the price of a house, maybe 20 years ago in Las Vegas, 150,000, now it's over 400,000. So the time value of money, a dollar today is not the same as a dollar tomorrow. So the longer they hold the money, that's opportunity cost. You know, a car that cost 15,000 20 years ago is now probably 30,000. So Holding money, to me, is a scam. Holding money, not refunding money promptly, to me, is a scam. That's what I mean by scam. They have $1,000 and they have $500 that they haven't paid out, $1,500.
Here's another example. What if you went to a major store such as Walmart and you asked for a refund and they said, sorry, sir, sorry, ma'am, we can't refund your money right away. You're going to have to mail us a letter and then we're going to hold on to it, but we're going to keep your money. That would not be acceptable if you did this with Amazon or Walmart. If they don't trust the payment, they shouldn't accept it in the first place. And that's the same with Treasury Direct. If they don't trust that I am who I say I am, then don't take the payment. But you don't take the payment and then hold it. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. When I was talking to the Treasury Direct guy over the phone, before I hung up, he's, he's like, oh, uh, one more thing, you know, basically one more thing type thing. But it was the opposite of what Steve Jobs does, where he gives you good news. It was more like the opposite, the bad news. So it was like, oh, yeah, you can't send that by email. You're going to have to mail it. And then there was like another one. Oh, and by the way, submitting this doesn't mean guarantee that we're going to unlock the account. And there's no guarantee that we may not lock. We may lock the account again in the future. So it was just one bad thing after another. So I would say run from Treasury Direct if you're worried about things like that. Now, I've seen some people complaining that they actually got locked out because they put in the wrong password or username. That That's not the case for me. I have a password manager. I didn't put in the wrong information. It looks like they just flagged my account because I tried to start taking out some money to the new bank account that I added. And so I believe they have a flaw in their system. When I added the Laurel Road checking account, for instance, and I linked it, it didn't ask for any micro deposits or any login info. So it didn't actually verify it. And then when I went to transfer money to the Laurel Road account, I think that's when they flagged it today. But I think there's a better way to do it, and I think they did it the wrong way. So locking, my, holding my money and then holding the funds and then expecting people to write letters and get it notarized is ridiculous. Now, Treasury Direct, on my first $500 that I deposited from my Wealthfront cash account, they put an initial hold on that. I believe it was five business days where I wasn't able to withdraw the money for five business days. So I already had the five-day hold on that account. The five days already passed. That wasn't an issue. But I think it was adding the Laurel Road account, the second bank account, and trying to send money to that bank account that caused this uh, lock. But regardless, it's unacceptable to ask the customer to get a notarized signature and mail something to them. That's ridiculous. Treasury Direct, to give them a little bit of credit, they've actually improved. About a year ago, it was completely unusable. If you actually want to do a login, on the login screen, you would actually have like a keypad where you have to put in the password with your mouse if you're using a computer, click each of the buttons. It was basically unusable. They had all these antiquated security methods. Well, they still have that stuff in the background. You just don't see it. And that's what I'm coming across today. And I'm not the only one. Other people have complained about this. Now, I. I looked at some uh, YouTubers that also had the same issue about accounts being locked. I found this guy down here called What's Up Kev. This video was from 2022. He's basically explaining the same thing about how annoying it is. His account was locked because I think he had the wrong information, the username or password. And rather than have a normal reset, he had to mail, get it notarized. He waited on the phone for like over an hour. Then he said that the wait time would be over 13 weeks. This was from 2022. He said it's unacceptable 2022 to have this kind of security method. So I have to print out a form, fill it out, get it notarized, and mail it to Minneapolis. It's 2022. It's ridiculous. And it gets worse. So he waited on the phone to try to find an easier way to do it, maybe over email. Basically, after an hour, they just said, you got to fill out the form. You got to have to have to get it notarized. And they said he said the wait time could be up to 13 weeks. So I'm hoping that it's a little bit quicker than 13 weeks. But I did get it out in the mail today. So we'll see how long it takes. So if you don't want to have if you don't want to have issues like this, what would I suggest? Well, I would suggest not using Treasury Direct. I would say if you want to buy Treasury bonds, you want to buy treasury bills go to fidelity something like fidelity you can buy them direct through fidelity or even easier buy a treasury etf there's numerous treasury etfs you can buy such as govt the iShares us government bond 
I have one that I, I buy. It's the floating rate uh, treasury bond called USFR. But there's numerous ones you can buy. And when combined with fractional shares, you could get in this for less than $100. And you don't have to deal with being locked out of the account. And the fees are very modest. If you're just invested in a regular money market account, like from Vanguard or from Fidelity, the, the default ones are heavily invested in treasuries anyways. So you're not going to have the headaches of the accounts possibly being locked. I think these are a much safer option than the government. It's hard to believe that I'm saying that that a private company would be much safer than the federal government, the U.S. Treasury Service. But if you look at the reviews, what people have been saying, here you can find other articles on the internet about accounts locked at Treasury Direct. Here's one on Reddit, Treasury Direct Account Locked. So I hope you liked the video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you like this video or comment below. Have a good one. If you don't already have a Discover IT card, I have a deal where you get 100 bucks. All you have to do is sign up for the no annual fee Discover IT card. You make one purchase within three months, you get 100 bucks. So check for the link below. I also have a referral deal with Raisin where you can get a bonus from 50 to $200 all for signing up with one of their high yield savings products or CDs with at least $5,000 or more and keeping the money there for 90 days. So check for the link below for that.